Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and welcome back to another Lumber Tycoon 2 video. Oh my goodness, it's been lumber. It's, it's lumber. It's been so long. Uh, that music is like super low. Test, test, test. There we go. So this should be a little bit better. Um, if you hear in the background, test, test. It's a little bit more echoey than normal. And that's because the garage is clean. It has been cleared out and it looks awesome. Even like where I'm sitting right now, I don't have quite the, the width of my green screen. Like you can even see the shadows from, from the lighting because the green screen is so close to me. We had to get rid of the, the big ladder that was behind me holding up the big green screen. So we're all pared down, ready to go and super excited. Um, today I figured I just come in here and we're going to build, but before I get started, before I do anything, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications, and you know what? Wait for the like. Don't hit the like button yet. I want you to wait until the end of the video, and then you tell me if you liked the video. That that way, it's, you know, I, I can call out the subscribes at the beginning, but it's the likes that I, I really, I want to hold off on. I don't want you doing a like before the video starts. That's just ridiculous. That's, that is silliness. Why would you ever do that, you know? But we need to, uh, be working on our roof. Is, is this going to fit? I don't think this is going to fit. That's way too big. Okay, so let's go back over here. And we don't want the three, but oh, we still need money. Oh, I completely forgot. Where's my truck? Did, did I destroy my truck? No, my truck didn't save. Dang it. Well, it looks like we're not building today. <laughs> well, we will build. I, I will definitely build because it's been a little while and I need to relax. I need to just chill out inside lumber and and just play, you know? Uh, a lot of you have been saying, Code, why don't you build up the side so you can drive back onto your base? It's fine. I'm going to wait until we get to the uh, the actual edges of the base and have everything in... Whoa. In, in the... Uh, like, have all the plots built first, and then we'll we'll come back and we'll do that. But for now... This is fine. I can just park on the edge. Whoa. Okay, we should be able to shut that. Yay. Okay. So this is this is from our last ex, ex excavation ex, excavation ex, whatever it's called the our last little adventure up to the ice wood. Uh, I hope you caught that one. If not, if you're new, if you're brand new, hi, welcome. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate. I have ADHD. I do YouTube, and I'm a programmer. You know, that's what I do. I'm also a dad, and uh, I'm married to a beautiful redhead. And that, uh, oh, the there was a video a few days ago about um, divorce, and I wanted to kind of readdress that because I had mentioned in there a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the ways that you should handle it as the adult in the relationship or in the marriage, but I didn't take the time to like address how a child during a divorce feels. And I, I, I definitely want to bring that up. Um, a lot of the times a child will feel like it's their fault. They'll feel like they're trapped in the middle. They'll feel like they didn't do something correctly and they won't talk about it. This is something that needs to be addressed, especially like with the parents. You need to talk to your children about like about what's going on. Even if it's a bad situation, like whichever parent the, the child is with, you need to let them know that it's not their fault. They are not the reason. Because a child will will blame themselves. They will they will try and take on the responsibility, the burden that they caused something with the divorce and that is just not true it's it's that is never the reason and it, it shouldn't be on the child to bear that kind of responsibility or that kind of burden so if your parents have been divorced if they're getting a divorce if you've been through a divorce before it's it's not your fault and i'm talking to to everyone who's ever been the child of a divorce it is not your fault. Don't you dare blame yourself, okay? There's there's gonna be some high emotions, some high tensions going on, and that is not, it is not caused by you. 
<sighs> that, that is a rough subject, you know? It was, it was rough the first time I was talking about it, and it's still rough now. I, I don't think that's going to be ever something that's easy for me to talk about. But I did want to bring that up. I wanted to address it and just let you guys know that if, if your parents are getting divorced, it's not your fault. It is not your fault. If your parents have been divorced and you're blaming yourself for it, stop. It is not your fault. There's a, there's a lot of anxiety that comes along with, um, with the emotions and with the, everything of a divorce. I mean, it's very, whoa, it's a very stressful situation. And I find, I find the best way to alleviate stress is to play a game that is not of high intensity. Yeah, you might call it a little bit of an escapism, like I'm escaping into a video game, but it really is. When you're feeling complete stress and you need some time to relax, find something like this. Find something like lumber. Find something like, um, okay, you just move, move your happy self on down there. That's, you see that? <laughs> Wow. It's best to just relax and just come in here, come in, come into a game, farm simulator or something low intensity. Don't go in and try and relax with Fortnite. Don't go in and play Call of Duty um, Modern Warfare. That's, that's not relaxing. That is not... Nope. What is that? Oh, that's me. I wrote pine on there. So I remember that this was, uh, this is pine wood, not fir wood. I remember that. Man. Let's, let's take a look at my house. That's, oh, look at this amazingness. Little shower head. Oh, and did I show you guys the, the little light down there? Like the light? I was able to build it through the cabinets. Oh, oh no, I don't want to. There. Boop. Oh, that's, that's dark. We'll keep the bathroom light on for now. <clears throat> Anyhow, did we have anything in the fridge? Got nothing in the fridge. No. Oh, that's bad. Like trying to shut the door from behind. And then we got our little entertainment center where we can watch movies, eat some popcorn, have a movie night. And then we have our, uh, our guest bedroom, which we haven't set up yet. Then we have master bedroom, which is pretty bare. Master bath. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, what was I doing again? Roof, roof, roof. The roof, the roof. The roof is not fire. We don't need no fire wood. We need golden. Ah, oh, dang it. Did I, oh, I did it again. All right, this is supposed to be one by one or one by 1.2. That way it's slightly, slightly bigger. And then that way we don't have to worry about being exact on our cuts. Yay. Boop. There you go, buddy. So should I, uh, should I make a whole bunch of, we can build it down here and then just move them up there when we're ready to, to move them in. That would be much quicker, I think. Uh, okay, hold on. Which which blueprint did we use? Oh gosh, I'm falling so behind today. There we go. Come up here. We'll just take a peek at this. Um, one third wedge for all your one third wedge needs. You know, Defaultio, we need curves. We need rounded siding. Um, more blueprints. Just blueprints galore. Can you can you give us like a ton of different blueprints and stick them all together and just make it amazing? That would be that'd be pretty cool. Just saying. Some edging for everything. Maybe some roundness. Maybe some inverted roundness. Like inverted wedges. Mm. Okay. Uh what did I say? One third? One third. Where's the one third wedge? Here's the one third wedge. Okay, so we need a bunch of these, right? Is that right? I don't want to set them down right there. Let's let's stage them over here. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three, four. I'm way off of alignment. One, two, three, four. Would you guys like to see um, more videos about logic gates from Lynx Logics? Uh, I know all the logic stuff and I've, I've done videos on before, but it's been a really long time since I've started programming um, logic gates. I was just wondering if you guys would be interested in that at all. I mean, I could set up little computers or little little relays, but maybe some flip flops. It's been been a little while since I've played with circuitry, but I, I love playing with circuits. And if you ever have a chance to order one of the Radio Shack circuit kits for like kids or something like that, highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. The advanced um, CUs, advanced, is it ICUs? Integrated circuit boards, ICBs. Those are fun to play with. Oh, the 555 timers, amplifiers, just getting everything wired up and having it all work correctly at the very end with a little breadboard. That is the most satisfying thing in the world. It is so fun. Uh oh, is that one too small? I think I might have made that one too small. Nope, I didn't. Come on, nope, nope. No, 96. That's the whole reason I did the 1.2s. Dang it. <clears throat> Man, we are already 11, 11 minutes into the video. I did not think it was gonna go by this fast, this quickly. I'm trying to keep them short, a uh, sh little bit shorter videos for the time being, just because we got a lot of stuff going on and uh, I need to be able to get in and go to bed and be up early for all the stuff we got going on in our lives right now. In fact, um, everybody's t-shirts, all the winners from the uh, the code swag grab, grab the, the ones that won the shirts, I have all of the shirts, they, they have arrived. I don't have any way of sh like ship them, shipping them out. I have your addresses, I have your your winnings and your names and everything else. I've got your sizes. Um, I'm not able to sign the shirts themselves, so I'm going to write you individual letters and send those out. But it's just another another big thing on my plate to do. Lots of stuff to do. <clears throat> I always hear a lot of YouTubers complain. They don't have time. They've got schoolwork, they've got this, they've got that, they've got the other. I don't understand. <laughs> when it comes down to being busy, ha try try having a full time job, doing YouTube on the side just just for fun, having kids, being married, and like doing doing all the adulting stuff. It's stressful. I'm not gonna lie, I'm stressed out. But that's why I come in here and I play. That's also why I've been doing this Subnautica series as well. Like it, that gives me a big escapism from the uh, the reality of the daily grind. So, <clears throat> and I always come back to the realization that everything's going to be fine. Everything's it always works out. It's always good. You know, the the world is a good place, and I know that people deep down are good. They want to help. That's. That's one of our downfalls as a human society is we want to be helpful, you know? Nobody wants to be mean. And every once in a while, I, I let that stress bubble up to my, my level too. Like, it just happens. And we're human for that. Everybody messes up sometimes. Everybody makes mistakes. It's okay. And it's okay to forgive yourself when you do make a mistake. I know a lot of people who, they make one simple misstep and they think to themselves oh i'm such an idiot oh why did i do that oh geez and you just you constantly beat yourself up it's okay to like yeah you kind of messed up a little bit there but to continuously like beat yourself down because you made a mistake that is not good you can forgive yourself and it's okay it's okay to say i messed up take responsibility for it carry on, do better next time. It is okay. And that's 
very general advice. You may have done something today, like in today you did something. It is 100% okay that you messed up. It is okay that something happened. Forgive yourself and move forward. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm getting all emotional. No, not really. Here's the thing about my ADHD and about just me in general. I have this insight to little stuff like this, like forgiving yourself and, and all the constants. My emotions can become very detached sometimes. Um, and I don't know if it's, whoa, there we go. If it's just me or if it's just my ADHD or if it's something that's been implanted in me. Maybe, it, it, maybe it's from the Marine Corps, who knows? But there's some times that I become very emotionally detached and it's just like, okay, yeah, you messed up, get over it, let's go. And I don't fully understand somebody's emotional ties to things. <sighs> One of those things in particular that I'm talking about, um, my mother. <sighs> So if you haven't seen my um, 5,000 subscribers special, The Draw My Life, I go through a very emotional state with everything of my mother and the passing and, and the way that she passed away. It's a very hard subject for me to talk about. It's very hard for me to go through and clean out some of the old boxes. I mean, it's been, she passed away in 2003 and here it is. 2021. I mean, that's 18, 17, 18 years later. That's been a really long time ago. It's been over 18 years. Hold on. I don't, I don't know if that's, that's right. But it's been a really long time. I should be able to go through those boxes and stuff. I went through a bunch of boxes during the clean out today during the clean out yesterday. And you know what? I've been holding on to boxes and boxes and boxes of crap. There's no other way to express it. It's crap. It's knickknack things. It is little figurines. It's little glass plates, glasswares, things that have no meaning to me. If they, if they had meaning to my mother, then great. If they had meaning to my dad, great. But for the majority of all those boxes and all those things and all that stuff, I've got the pictures of my mom. I've got the memories that I want to keep. Why am I holding on to boxes of things that I will never display? I won't ever put them in my house. I won't ever like set them out hang them up, whatever the case may be, it's junk. And a lot of you, a lot of people, a lot of grownups, a lot of fellow grownups who I speak with are like, well, but that was your mom's. You need to hold on to that and maybe pass it down and maybe it'll be worth something someday. I'm like, no, it won't. And my kids, they don't, they don't know their grandparents. Like, and their interests are much different than most of my families. I hate to say that, but like, they they really truly are. So we we junked a ton of boxes, a ton of old my old baby clothes. When I was a baby, we can't reuse them. They're they're dirty. They're old. They're, they're just. Why are we keeping them? Yeah, it was kind of cool to, to like reminisce and go back through it. But I mean, when I pass, when it's my time, I don't want my children having to go through all the stuff that my mother and grandmother had. That's just junk. I've got the few little select things that I wanted and that have stories behind them that were meaningful to me that I have something for. Got it. Cool. Put it off to the side. This is my little amount. This is all I want. And all this, it was like a glacier. 
Like, you know how you can see the little part of a glacier on top, and that's just like the little bitty amount that you see, and then there's this massive chunk of ice that's under the water that you can't see? That was my mother's stuff. And I hate to say this, and I'm going to say it on camera, she was a hoarder. She had so much stuff, and in turn, it turned me into a hoarder. I, I kept so much stuff, and I don't know why. We got rid of it. And I felt really good. There was a moment when I saw uh, all the like the 100 got junk guys. They were like pulling just tons and tons of stuff that we had boxed off, put off to the side, and said, "Take this, get it gone." And I asked them. I said, "Do you guys do donations? Like when you go through this, do you take stuff and like do the recycling, do the donates, or do you just junk it all?" And they're like, "No, we have a sorting center that we take it to, and when stuff is still usable, we give it to donations. They they do that for for everything they take." So, 100 junk guys. You guys rock. You've been out here a couple times, and every single time, I've just had a great experience with them. So, <sighs> shout out to the 100 God Junk guys. Pretty cool. Anyhow, I uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. We've we've been working oh, pretty heavy at 20 21 minutes, you know, and we've got our golden solar panels going on here. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope that you have a good day. And I hope that this little interlude of your day gave you some inspiration, gave you, gave you something to look forward to, and maybe some reflection onto your own life. But I digress. Thank you, everyone, for watching this episode of Lumber Tycoon 2 with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end of the videos like a good YouTuber does, but it's your choice. If you want to, go for it. If not, that's cool, too. You were here, you watched, you had fun. I love you for that. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. Steven! Steven! Steven. It's time. Oh, wait. I'm supposed to do something. Uh... Oh, Oliver, I forgot what it was Was I was supposed to shout out. I'm supposed to shout out something about Carnage. Anyhow, the, the new Venom 2 movie is coming out soon, and we told him that um, we're, we're going to take him to it, to the movie theaters, down, um, like, at the movie theater. Like, we're actually going to go to a movie theater. They opened back up. Did you guys know that? It's open again. The Alamo. If you guys still call it Campbell 16, you know where Springfield is. <laughs> Love you guys. Shout out. Carnage. Venom. Carnage is, is awesome. I don't remember what I'm supposed to shout out. Anyhow. Love you, Oliver. Love you, Hope. Love you, Liz. <gasps> Outro. Want some new merch? Check out teespring.com. Outro.